All right, folks, I'm at it again. I am in, uh, I guess, south of Humble, Texas, just just near the intersection of uh, Highway 59 North and Beltway 8. Uh, and I got this call about you know, a week or so ago about these bees in a tree. You can see the tree, the top half of it snapped off in the past. And I guess since then, the tree has rotted out and the bees have moved in. Um, so it's not real tall. It's only about, you know, 10 foot tall, 10 or 12 foot tall. Um, but I can't drop it easy because these limbs back here are going out the other way towards the neighbor's fence and I think it's almost balanced. And so what I'm going to do is start working on this side, cut windows out of this side and see if I can't do this whole one standing upright. So anyway, they, they appear to be nice enough bees, at least they're definitely not Africanized because they're letting me stand about six foot away right now and they don't mind me one bit. So uh, anyway, we'll uh, get into it, get it cut open and uh, see what we find. <laughs> Alright, I think that's enough I can do my job. <laughs> Found the bottom of the nest here. Appears to be anyway. The combs end. I didn't cut them off. That's where they end. And I tell you, I think these bees are going to be happy that I got to them. They're a little set right now, understandable, but this down here is a writhing pile of beetle larvae. There's a, all that. See all the white maggots? There's just a nasty mass of small hive beetle larvae in this hive. Um, so hopefully I can get them cut out and uh, transferred home. You know, it's not a not a huge colony, but decent size for being inside this tree. Uh, but boy, look at that! How neat that is! Cut out a nice little nice little bench there. So people will be able to come and look at this for years to come. Say there once was bees there, and then along came Tom. But anyway, enough goofing off. I got to get to cutting combs. Don't think I can run my vacuum because I don't think my cord. Will <coughs> I don't think my cord is going to reach the house. So this might be interesting. Here, this is beekeeper creativity at its best. Put a little, little, little bit of lemongrass oil in there and uh, use that block of wood to stick it away. It's a piece I cut off. Set my box up top, and you can see the bees are really, they're really checking that box out like they want to orient to it. Um, what I'm hoping is I can set it up there and uh, I'll just start smoking the comb on the bottom see if I can't get all the bees to start running up and into the box because again you know I'll have my vacuum the uh, well there's my power cord laying over there and we are about at least 30 feet away so I came up more than short um, anyway I thought I'd show that to you guys that, I think that's pretty clever I can reach up there and pull out frames as I need them to uh, cut combs into but 
Right now I'm just uh, cutting combs and looking for that queen, so. Uh -huh. All right, let's give you all a little status update real quick where we're at. <laughs> I've got <coughs> most of the key combs cut out. I think there's a few little scraps still back in here, but uh, nothing major. I actually only had enough combs to fill three deep frames. So this is a relatively small hive. You know, they, they had a lot of comb, so to speak. Um, a lot of scraps laying on the ground there, over there, and a few over there, but it's all empty. Um, this hive was struggling. It really was struggling. I, I honestly think that uh, if I hadn't gotten to them and without a real good honey flow, they wouldn't have made it. They got a, a good population of bees, but no resources at all. Not a lick of honey. Um, they don't even have any drones. That's what I found interesting. No drones. Um, which tells me that they have very, very little resources. I found about a half a deep frame worth of bee bread pollen, but no honey, no wet nectar, um, and very, very little brood. And I think that I think that lack of brood is really just because of uh, you know lack of resources. The queen's just not laying. So hopefully I can get them home and uh, get some sugar water on them, get them fed up, uh, maybe give them a few frames of comb from other hives just to give them a boost because uh, they sure need it. But anyway, where we're at right now is I'm just. Uh, waiting and watching for that queen. Um, they're not doing a real strong march to the box. There's a lot of them over, a few of them over here fanning quite a bit. A lot of them on and in the box, but still no strong march. So I'm trying to just drive them that way. I'm, you can see I'm working them up <coughs> from the bottom. I've been spraying Be Quick and then using my smoker to, uh, to drive them up. So hopefully the queen will eventually run her way up there. And uh, once she does, I'll see a much stronger march. They're still really hanging on this tree like they really like it. So. You know, I don't know, she might be buried up in here somewhere, so. Uh, anyway, just thought I'd give you all a little touch of where we're at. Got her, folks. Woo. She was a tough one. Notice I'm using my new uh, queen cage here. Look at that, I got a reflection in the cage. Boy, that's nice. Uh, but it is not focused on me, is it? Let me see here. Let me see if I can get it to focus in on her. Oh, boy. What these gloves will do for you. There we go. That'll focus. She's in there. I like these new cages. I bought, got these from Daydant. Um, they're stainless steel queen catchers, but they're better because they have a low profile, so they can actually be put into a frame. The, the plastic ones from Man Lake are too wide, and, a, and they break. I've broken so many plastic ones, so I'm hoping these aluminum ones hold up. They're stainless steel. But anyway, she's in there. This queen. Uh, she was stubborn. She was real stubborn. She was down here inside the tr trunk of the tree the whole time. And I kept smoking and using Be Quick and driving them up from the bottom. And I uh, finally I saw her around the corner right here. And I tried to catch her and I missed because there was a ball of bees. This whole area right here was all full of bees. And I didn't want to crush her. So I, I took a shot at her but I missed. Um, pardon my snorting. Uh, my sinus is still clear. Anyway, I took a shot and I missed. And then it was about another 20 minutes. She ran up underneath the box and she was all in there. And uh, I came around back here and... There's a big, big ball of bees hanging out back here on the bottom of the box, and they're starting to run up the tree limb trying to get away from me. So started up on the tree limb, started spraying bee quick to run them back down, and then started using my smoker to, to blow that ball out. And uh, they finally all started running back in. What's funny is the whole time the queen was underneath here hiding out, the bees were all up here fanning like crazy. So they were starting to march. They were fanning really, really good up here. The queen wasn't there. So, you know, just goes to show you all, just because they're fanning hard at the box doesn't mean she's in there. Um, she was underneath. They were just fanning because they liked it. So, again, she's in there. Um, I can't see her in the camera myself just because of the glare off my phone. But hopefully, hopefully y'all can. She's a good-looking queen. Big. I uh, got a big old copper bottom on her. It's funny, you know, they have such a big queen, uh, so capable, uh, but just no resources. I haven't seen a drone one. So, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna strap her in here, and I'm gonna take off and head home to help my wife do some chores. And I'm going to come back tonight and get them because they're still working on the way into this box. Yeah, so I'm just out here doing a little late night beekeeping, you know, what I always tell you not to do. But it's the way it goes when you got kids. Um, that's our queen again. I've taken to releasing them in the cages like this. I really like it. You know, my habit in the past was to leave them in the queen catcher and then go back 24 hours later and release them. But I like to do this instead with the candy plug. Uh, you know, that gives you that uh, three to four days or whatever it takes for them to get out. Uh, hopefully in that amount of time the bees decide that they like the hive that you put them in and they'll stay. Um, but it also means that I don't have to, you know, remember to go back the next day and let them out. You know, with me being as busy as I am, that surely is, it sure is useful. It's nice to be able to just, uh, you know, kind of let them do their thing. And I'll check back on them in a week or so to make sure, <coughs> make sure everybody's happy and make sure the queen's out. But 
Uh, I'm calling this job three for three. They seem uh, happy and this queen seems healthy.